Republicans met face to face with President Obama at the White House after the closed door meeting was done. House Speaker John Boehner and other GOP lawmakers left without speaking to reporters. So, what does this mean? Joining me now, two of those lawmakers that were in the room Texas Congressman Jeb Henserling and Oregon Congressman Greg Warren. Gentlemen, uh, welcome to the program. Bring us inside. Evening, Everyone wants to know what happened. Tell us what happened, Jeb. Uh, well, I, I must admit, Sean, I've been in uh, probably eight or nine meetings with the president, relatively speaking. I would say this one was more constructive and useful, but the bottom line is uh, the president didn't say no. The president didn't say yes uh, to our offer uh, to begin negotiations, uh, to create a little bit of negotiating space uh, on the debt ceiling, uh, to begin negotiations. Uh, on the funding bill. Um, so, uh, you know, it took a long time to get to the point where the president says, I'm not ready to say yes, I'm not ready to say no, and talks are going to continue in the evening. Stay tuned. Yeah, you know, uh, Congressman Walden, we actually have two reports. New York Times says Obama rejects GOP offer of a short term debt limit plan uh, because it doesn't deal with the government shutdown. Yes. Then we got a readout. The president said the meeting went well, lasted an hour and a half, and after discussion about a path forward, no specific determination was made. So I'm, right. do I believe the New York Times or the Office of the White House? You help me out. You were in the room. I, I, I would, <laughs> both Jeb and I were in the room, and I would tell you the president didn't say yes. The president didn't say no. I think it was a useful uh, hour and however many minutes, uh, I think, to clarify where each party stood. Look, these are really serious times for our country because we have such a huge deficit problem and a huge spending problem. The economy's still on the rocks. It shouldn't have gotten to this kind of critical state before we we were able to get a negotiation with the president. Would have been nicer to do sooner and avoid these kinds of crisis moments. You know, this isn't a good way to operate. We all believe that way. But coming out of it, I think you are seeing some progress. At least the, the staffs and, and the leaders are going to be discussing into tonight. And we put everything else on hold at this point. So I, I think there is a glimmer of hope here. Um, but, you know, it, the proof's going to be in what comes out of discussions that, that continue on into tonight. Congressman Henseling, would you... Characterize this as a negotiation. Bring us in the room. Who did most of the talking, and would you would you characterize it as a negotiation? Uh, no, Sean, I don't think it's. Uh, no, this is a discussion that yeah. will hopefully lead to a negotiation. Uh, you know, I, I kind of remember my uh, history about how long it took uh, uh, to negotiate at uh, you know the Vietnam War, where people talked about the size of the table and shape of the table for eight months. I hope it doesn't come down to that. So no, it wasn't a negotiation. But let's face it, Sean, there there hasn't been a lot of. Um, quality interaction between the uh, White House and House Republicans, so it took a while for there to be some understanding about uh, what each party was looking for. Uh, but i got to admit, Sean, I've been to a number of meetings with the President where I left feeling that I was only lectured to. Uh, I thought I might be going to this meeting to hear for the umpteenth time uh, Were that you the lectured President to? refuses to negotiate. Uh, so I didn't quite hear that, Sean. And so, you know, what do I do as a congressman? I have, I've always had high hopes, low expectations. At this moment, it's a little higher on the hopes. Uh, but it's not resolved. It is not resolved. Not resolved. And, and when you ask who did most of the talking, well, quite honestly, the president does do a lot of the talking. But uh, for our side, certainly the speaker, uh, the leader, uh, and uh, our whip, and, uh, and Paul Ryan played a very critical role in, uh, in the yeah. discussions as well. Well, I know Republicans, I would argue this is your fifth offer now, because it was defund, it was delay, yeah. it was eliminate right. exemptions, it was have a conference. The president's posture has been not even to talk to you guys. He'll, he has time for the mullahs, though, in Iran. Um, and now this you is... You did the math right, Sean. You did the math right. Okay, so now this is, now, now this is the latest offer. Um, did he make any, give any indication, Congressman Walden, that there's some deal out there available for him? Or did he just say, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not? Oh, I, I think by the end, by the end and only at the end, uh, did we get to a point where maybe there was a better understanding uh, from the president about what we were bringing to the table. And, you know, we're, we're asking for an opportunity to negotiate, to sit down and have real serious discussions about this government of ours, its costs, its expenses, its programs, and how we get the economy on the right track. And so, I, I, you know, I, I haven't been in as many meetings as, as uh, Jeb has with the president. I felt a lot of the same pain he was feeling. But at the end, I do think we made slight 
progress here in the sense that we both agreed it was useful and uh, nobody said yes, nobody said no. And, uh, you know, given how slow things move and how long it's taken to get to this point with this president, I have to think you, you label it slight progress. Yeah. Let me ask you, Congressman Henseling, you know, Paul Ryan's op-ed has gotten a lot of play in the Wall Street Journal yesterday, and he sort of pivots in this in, in this op-ed. And he talks about, man, it seems like a grand bargain, although I think he resisted calling it that, where he makes a pivot away from Obamacare, which is the, the issue of the moment with the continuing resolution. And he starts talking about Social Security reform, Medicare reform, tax code reform, uh, oil and, and gas and energy reform, and, and making some structural changes. Was mostly that discussed? Was anything about health care and exemptions discussed? Sean, again, it wasn't a negotiation. It was a discussion trying to lead to a negotiation. Uh, I don't think anybody expressly said that anything was off the table. And, and hopefully the president understands now uh, that Republicans are never going to give up. Uh, and I think to some extent he, he acknowledged it. Republicans are not going to give up uh, fighting Obamacare. You know, every single day I, I get a new correspondent from somebody in my district, you know, Congressman, I, you know, Obamacare has cost me an extra $1,500. Congressman, Obamacare has just cut me back yeah. to 29 hours. But as we all know, the sad reality is because 90 to 95 percent of Obamacare is what we call automatic or entitlement spending. Ultimately, as long as he's president, the only way right. to repeal or defund his signature law is with his signature but we're not going to give up and we are always always going to have Last that question. Uh, to, 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 on the table uh, and I'll, I'll throw this at both of you and you can answer uh, at will um, a lot of conservatives are concerned that republicans are negotiating too much with themselves and that in the end they may not hold the line that the democrats are united and the democrats don't seem willing to give in any way uh, do you feel strong enough mm -hmm that Congressman Walden, that they are willing to yeah. hold the line, that they're going to stand on their principles? I'll tell you, Sean, I absolutely do. We know uh, what it sounds like back home. We know the importance of the decision that's upon us as a country. And I think that's why you see the president finally agreeing to at least sit down and have a conversation that might yeah. lead to negotiation. He knows we're serious because we are because the problems are so serious. We Con have to do it and do it now. Congressman Hensley. Oh. I, I, absolutely. You know, Sean, you look at uh, this freshman class, the class before I mean, These are people, you know, who, who, who left good jobs. You know, they're, they're leaving their families back home because they care passionately about the cause of liberty, about free enterprise, about our values. And no, they're not going to give it up and rubber stamp what the president wants. We will negotiate in good faith, but we have the power of the purse, not the power of the rubber here, here. stamp. That's right, what the guys. Constitution says, and we will stay strong. Hold the line. Appreciate it. Thanks for being with us.